everybody, this is Peter WWE Meteorologist Connor Kozad with your March 2016 Outlook. All of the data in this video is from Friday, February 26, 2016 from 12Z model data. Now let's jump right in. This is the 10 millibar heights and temperatures for early March. We've marked the highs and low pressures on this map at the 10 millibar height. Um, and the <clears throat> red area next to that low pressure that you see on the map it's so where we're going to have stratospheric warming, or a stratospheric warming event. Usually this helps bring colder air into the northeast, which is one of the reasons why we're likely going to see a colder early March. The part that's not helping us here is the polar vortex. At the 10 millibar heights, you can see there's only one low pressure on this map. One distinct area of low pressure, which is the polar vortex. If we had two distinct areas of low pressure, then we would probably be seeing a more elongated period of cold temperatures in March. But for this reason, we're not going to see that elongated uh, period of cold temperatures in March, rather a shorter period of time at the beginning of March. We're likely going to see colder temperatures. And one of the reasons helping us get that cold air in here is the stratospheric warming that you see on this map. As we move further into March, this is the... 11th to the 18th, um, the low pressure is weakening over northern Europe, and the high pressure is moving a little bit further south at the 10 millibar height. The stratospheric warming that we saw in early March is beginning to dissipate, so this is why we also think that as we transition into mid-March, we're going to see temperatures returning closer to normal. This is the 500 millibar heights map for early March and we're likely going to be seeing a negative NAO and negative AO pattern setting up here. You can see the high pressure south of Greenland is the reason we're going to be seeing, uh, or at least part of the reason we're going to be seeing cold temperatures in early March. The high pressure is going to force a ridge over the Atlantic Ocean, and what goes up must come down, so we have a trough in the east now, um, also marked by the lower heights in the blue here that you can see on the map. This is going to allow colder air to come into the northeast during early March, and we're also, uh, once we go look at the CFS models later in this video, we're also going to see that negative NAO in action. <clears throat> um, the negative NAO and the negative AO also help us get um, more snowstorms into the area, since there's a trough um, digging down into the, probably not all the way into the southeast United States, but definitely dipping down into the northeast, we're going to see low pressures riding along that jet stream and bringing uh, snowstorms to the area. And that's likely. Um, we can't really say anything about snowstorms until they actually appear on the models a few weeks out, or at least a week out. Um, so we're, the pattern is setting up for early March to see those snowstorms. If we move later into mid-March, the high pressure has moved off the map, and the low pressure is backing off to the north. We're going to see that negative NAO begin to weaken. You can also see on this map we have higher heights over our coverage area, which is not going to help us get cold air into the area as we move into mid-March. This is another reason why we're likely going to see temperatures in the middle of March returning back to normal, as well as an unfavorable track for snowstorms. And as we move all the way into the middle of March, specifically March 12th to March 17th, according to this model, the low pressure is, or has continued to move off to the north, and that negative NAO is almost completely gone. That high pressure is almost completely disappeared um, from southern Greenland. You can also see that there are higher heights for the 500 millibar level across most of our coverage area. So just reinforcing the fact that we're probably going to see temperatures return back to normal as we head into mid-March. Another thing I'd like to look at is the Euro MJO forecast, or the Madden-Julian oscillation. As we end out February, we're likely going to see um, that the MJO moves back into Phase 7, but in the first week of March, we're going to see it move into Phase 8, and Phase 8 for the Northeast United States specifically our coverage area, is a generally cool phase. Um, this is another reason why we're going to see the cold temperatures in early March. Phase 8 is also associated with below average precipitation, which is one of the reasons why 
the CFS precipitation model, which I'm going to show you two slides from now, is predicting closer to average precipitation for early March. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the negative NAO. If we look at early March, when we have that negative NAO in place, that stratospheric warming in place, the phase 8 MJO in place, that is clearly shown on the early March CFS model here with temperatures. There is a clear region of dark blue to the north of the United States border and definitely colder than average across our coverage area. As we move into mid-March, we're probably going to see temperatures closer to normal and late March, the trend just continues. We're going to see above average temperatures according to the CFS here. If we switch over to precipitation, early March, the CFS is balancing out the two biggest factors here for precipitation. We have the negative NAO, where we're going to see storm tracks moving up the coast, which favors a lot of precipitation, while the phase 8 MJO favors less precipitation. So I think the C what the CFS is doing here in early March is balancing those two out, which is why the CFS is saying near average for precipitation. Later in March, we're going to see the precipitation increase according to the CFS. Um, so let's go take a look at what Peter WW really thinks is going to happen. Here's our official forecast for March 2016. Early March, below average temperatures. We're fairly confident about that because we have the stratospheric warming, the negative NAO, as well as the phase 8 MJO in place for that. We're also thinking that we're, uh, we're going to see above average precipitation because of that negative NAO. I, although this chart says confidence is for moderate to high, I think I'd go closer to moderate just because that phase 8 MJO doesn't really support above average precipitation. As for snow in early March, this is going to be the most favorable time this month for us to see snow. The pattern is in place for us to see snowstorms coming up the coast, or at least affecting our coverage area somewhat. So if you're a snow lover, early March is going to be your time. As we move into the middle of March, everything is becoming closer to average because we're in a transition period at this point. Temperatures are near average as the negative NAO backs off, the stratospheric warming backs off, whatnot. Um, precipitation is going to be near average, and snow. We're saying snowstorms are going to be possible, but not likely, because the pattern is moving again, and the pattern in middle of March is not going to be as favorable for snowstorms to affect our coverage area in the middle of March. Late March, we're likely going to see above-average temperatures with near-average precipitation, and snowstorms are becoming very unlikely at this point. Um, the fact that the negative NAO is almost completely gone at this point as well as the fact that we're going to see above average temperatures, probably temperatures in the 40s at some point in late March. Um, I don't think we're going to be seeing snowstorms in late March. And late March snowstorms are possible, but the way that the pattern is setting up for this March, I don't think we're going to be seeing snowstorms in the later part of this month. So that's your forecast for March 2016 from PRWW. I'm PRWW meteorologist Connor Kozen. Have a great day.